All right, so I want to post a video discussing refraction and spherical interfaces, uh, mostly motivated by, by uh, my poor attempt to um, explain this concept question that we went over today in class. Um, so I m messed it up a little bit, and I wanted to clarify things. This really turned out to be too complicated a question to ask. I was being too clever, so I apologize. But let me take you through it. So basically, the scenario is just drawn here. Um, we're going to spend most of our time this week talking about thin lenses and mirrors. And so this is a special case. This is a case where you're, you have an interface between one material and another, and there's a spherical surface at the interface, so it's kind of an unusual thing. Um, but we'll go over it. Um, you can get image formation by refraction, as we talked about. So if I take an object like this um, and look at rays that come from the object, there uh, I can draw one ray and take a couple principal rays. Um, I, I can take a ray that's parallel. Now, I don't, I can't define, it turns out, a focal length for this arrangement. Um, and so I don't know where this object, where this um, ray is going to go. It'll actually depend on where the object is. Um, so, but what I can do is I, I know I can draw a, a, this dotted line, which defines the surface normal for this spherical surface. Then I know that the ray is going to bend toward the normal. So I'm going to get a ray that goes like that. The second ray I've drawn here uh, goes through the radius of curvature located, the center of curvature, R, for the surface. And because of that, I know that th the angle with which it hits the interface is 90 degrees, and therefore there's no refraction because sine of 90, um, or sorry, not 90 degrees, the angle that it hits the surface with respect to the normal is zero. Okay, and so the only way to satisfy Snell's law is to have the, the angle of refraction also be equal to zero, and it just goes in a straight line. Okay, and using those two, I can uh, locate an image here. All right, now, um, we, I wrote down an equation in class. Let me do it again here. So it turns out if you go through the analysis, and it's on pages 1300, 1301, at least in my edition of the book, um, goes through this analysis, and I won't bore you with it. But you can show for small angles, again, uh, for the paraxial approximation, you can have um, the following expression be true. Okay, where n1 is the... Uh, is the index of refraction in this region here, so that's 1.0 in this example, and N2 is the index of refraction in the glass. Okay, S is the location of the object, um, and again, the definitions here are relative to the vertex of the lens, which is, you know, this point right here. Okay, um, okay, and then these, uh, these two add up to give you uh, N2 minus N1 over the radius of curvature of this interface, and so that's the, the distance here. So again, the distance for the object is defined to this point on the, this curved surface. Um, here's your radius of curvature. The image location is defined, again, from this point here, okay? Now, I'll, I'll go over um, all of this again in class uh, on Thursday in terms of the sign conventions, but maybe I'll say it here, too, just to, uh, to, to be clear. Um, what we'll find is that the sign convention for everything um, is based on the side of the optical system where light exits the optical system, okay? So for, um, for this system, light will always exit on this side, okay? So when I have positive values, that means I'm on this side for both the image and the radius of curvature. Okay. Now, the object is always going to have positive values on the side where light starts. Okay, Light enters the system, that's where the object distance is positive. Now, you might ask, why in the heck would I have a negative object distance? Right now, there's no clear reason for that. What we'll find is that when we have more than one lens in a system, um, what we're going to do is uh, create an image with one lens and then use the image as the object of the second lens. And in that case, we will find that we can have a negative object distance. And I'll cover that later. But for now, S is uh, going to be positive because it's always going to be on the side where light rays start. Okay. Now, S prime is always going to be on the, is positive on the side where light rays exit. And so in this case, that's on the right side of the, the interface. For a mirror, the positive side will be the, 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 the same side as the object. So light rays get reflected back, and so positives over there. 
in the case of a mirror, the radius of curvature is also positive. If it's, you know, if the center of the mirror curvature, um, let me draw a picture just to be clear. So and then I'll move on and talk more about this. Um, so for a mirror, the center of curvature is, is well defined and the distance from the vertex, so this will be a, a positive center of curvature here because it's on the same side as that light comes in. Um, if I considered a, um, oops, didn't mean to get rid of that, but consider a convex mirror like this, the center of curvature now is on the wrong side. So light rays are going to come in and do this. Um, this would have an effective focal length that's negative. So the focal length for this mirror um, is going to be 2 over minus 2 over r because it's on the wrong side um, where light uh, exits. Okay, I'll reiterate that in class on Thursday, but just to say it again here. Okay, so if I consider again my particular example, oops, I did it again, um, where we had a, a, a interface that curved like this. Okay. Um, this has a positive radius of curvature, R, because it's on the side where light will exit the system, which is going to go this way when it exits. Okay. All right. And so I had asked you a complicated question saying, um, if I immerse it, I start out with this thing in air and I immerse it in water, what happens to the image that's created? Okay. And it turns out that was too far of a stretch uh, for this question. Okay, so again, there's the system that I'm talking about, um, and I see an image forming here. Now, um, this image, this system is not as easy to analyze intuitively, so it's d difficult to build intuition. Now, it turns out that what we'll learn about thin lenses will apply here. Okay, if I have a system that's converging, so in other words, if I have n1 less than n2, and I have a curved surface like this. This is going to tend to make rays converge. Okay, with a, con a converging interface, um, I can ha can form a variety of types of images. So here's one example where I can form a diminished real image, um, but I can also form a uh, magnified uh, real image, and I can form a uh, magnified virtual image. Okay, now where I screwed up in my example. Um, and here I've corrected it, it turns out, in this image. But I screwed up by putting this, I, I said that this one was the right answer by mistake. Okay, so it turns out that um, whenever you have a converging system like this, you always form magnified uh, virtual images like over here. Okay, and let me just show you that. Okay, so let me take you through. Um, the case of, of moving the object around and seeing what kind of images form with this system. Okay, so let me just take this particular case I've drawn here. Um, let me get red out. Okay, so I have a light ray that comes in like this. <clears throat> I can show, here's my surface normal. Okay, so I know it's going to bend towards the normal. In this case, it's going to go like this. Okay, and now I can pick another ray that goes straight through the radius of curvature. Okay, and when they meet up over here, <clears throat> I'm going to have my image. Okay, which in this case, as you see, um, is, is starting to look magnified. Um, now it turns out as I uh, move this um, object further away, uh, or sorry, move it closer, okay, um, I'm going to uh, magnify it even further. Okay, so let me show that here. So if I now, let me just do this on the same image. Bear with me here. On the same image, if I move this, <clears throat> the same drawing, I'll move this object forward a bit. Um, I have to be careful not to move it too much, too far forward. So let me, let me do this. Let me put it right here. Okay, and now redraw rays. Let me take green. So this one is going to be identical because it, it's all it's a parallel ray. It's going to do the same thing it did before. So go out like that. But now the second ray um, that I've drawn here is still going to go through R. That means it's going to go out 
I'm exaggerating things perhaps a bit too much here, but it's going to go out like this and eventually meet up with this one, but way out here. Okay, so I'm going to end up getting a magnified uh, real image way over there. <clears throat> now, if I get even closer to um, to the lens or to the surface um, where I get in uh, the refractive surface, and let me draw it over again here. Okay. Okay, so I'll try to stick with the same picture as above. But now let's move it so my <clears throat> object is right here. Okay. All right, in my center of curvature, I'll put it right here again. Okay. Um, now if I draw my rays, so I'll go here. So this ray, I should have stuck with my old image, I, I suppose. Um, well, let me just try it again. So this ray is going to be curved in a certain way, and let me try to draw it similarly to what I have up there. So I think like that. Okay. <clears throat> now the ray here <clears throat> is going to take an angle where it will never meet with this ray here. Okay. So these rays are diverging now. And so if I'm over in the, in the glass looking at these rays spreading apart, it looks to me like they came from back here. Okay. And so if I get too close to the, um, the spherical interface, um, I'm not able to make these rays here converge together anymore. And one way to think about it is this, I have a, a certain, um, the, the angles involved with rays that come in, not, not necessarily for the ones I'm drawing here, but if you, you look at the, the rays that are collected by, <clears throat> uh, by this surface that come off of this object, they tend to be steeper uh, with respect to um, the optical axis here. <clears throat> And so the surface has, a, has to work hard to bend those rays in uh, to focus them. And so if it doesn't have enough uh, focusing power, that is the radius of curvature isn't that strong, uh, it's not going to be able to gather those rays and converge them. And they're, they're going to remain diverging, even though you do, you know, bend it in a way that might be converging. What you can see is you don't bend it quite enough, okay? And you end up still with diverging rays coming from this object. And that ends up producing a virtual image that um, is always going to be magnified. Okay, so this is the bit that I screwed up here. I showed a um, diminished image in front of the object. And it turns out that was that's correct if I have a uh, diverging interface. That will always be the answer, but I don't. This is, this is what we would call a converging interface. The interface is set up to bend rays in towards the axis. That's what's happening here. So in that case, when you have a converging lens, um, if you get too close, then you will uh, form a virtual image. And it has to, again, to do with this fact that you're not converging the rays enough when you're too close to the lens. Um, all right, so we can, let me look at that mathematically here. Um, if I take my expression again, I'll write it over again, one, uh, n1 over s plus n2 over s prime is n2 minus n1 over r. Now, if I want this to be virtual, I want this quantity to be negative, which I can rewrite as n2 minus n1 over r minus excuse me, minus n1 over s. So if this ends up being bigger than that, then I'm going to have a virtual image formed, okay? Um, and so you can see that's going to happen when s is small. So if s gets small, I get close to the interface, the spherical interface between the two media, I'm going to form a virtual image, okay? Um, now, another expression I can, that's in the book that I'm not going to derive for you is you can show that the magnification of such a system uh, can be written as minus n1 times the image location over n2 times the object location. Okay, and so the scenario we're showing now, N2 is bigger than N1, um, but the, uh, as we just reconstructed, let me go back and show you, um, if I look at this case at the bottom of the page here, you see that S prime in this case is bigger um, 
I'm making a mess. The location of the image, which is here, is a, a bigger distance from the mirror, uh, not the mirror, sorry, the, the surface of this uh, uh, material than the object. Okay, so S prime is bigger than S by our construction here. And that's going to be consistent with the mathematics. So when I go through and calculate what S prime is going to be in that case, I'm going to get a negative number, but S prime is going to be bigger than S. Um, and so I'm going to end up getting magnification, but it will depend on the ratio of N1 to N2. Okay. All right. Um, so that's basically uh, going over the situation where I have... Um, uh, refractive index, a, a transition from one material to another where there's a spherical interface. It's kind of an unusual situation, so you know, it's a very contrived situation, but it, the book presents it first as a route to going towards thin lenses. And what I'm going to focus on in class is getting you intuition for thin lenses, which will be a little easier to understand. But what I'll point out now and reiterate later is that um, what we just did here um, in this discussion, looking at image creation, when we have, let me bring up my beautiful drawing here, when we have a system like this, um, the creation of images is going to be, the intuition you gain from thin lenses will apply here too. Okay, so we're going to consider converging and diverging thin lenses. Um, here, if you have a converging interface like this, or a diverging interface, which, um, let me skip to the next page and draw that. If I had a diverging interface, it, it would look, you know, like this, for example. And I have rays coming in. This is going to diverge. So this is going to act just like a diverging thin lens in terms of the type of images it's going to form. And as we'll see, a diverging thin lens is going to form only diminished virtual images. And that we'll go through that. Um, and if I have a converging lens, um, oops, I went the wrong way. Um, then I'm going to get a situation that's very much the same in terms of what kind of images can be formed. I keep jumping the wrong way. Um, then in this system here, where I have a converging interface, this is going to act just like a converging thin lens. And so these images that we just talked about, getting um, getting these kind of magnified real images will we'll show that you can get diminished real images also um, and getting magnified virtual images like this will come out of considering converging thin lenses. It turns out this scenario is what we call a magnifying glass. Okay. All right. So again, apologies for being scatterbrained uh, in class today. Um, I wanted to show this video to, to kind of clean things up for you, and hopefully it does. If you have questions about it, you'll have an opportunity to ask as I go over this kind of stuff again on Thursday. Okay.